Greetings and welcome to Saka Industry News, the twice-monthly email-based publication that keeps you informed and educated about recent news and tech topics from inside the sake industry in Japan. In each video, we present a topic or so from a past newsletter, and be sure to stick around for the end, where we provide you with a link for a discount when you subscribe to Saka Industry News. Milling the rice before beginning to brew is the first and one of the most important steps in the sake brewing process. Milling is done to remove fat and protein from the outside of the grains, leaving only the starch in the center behind. Let's look at how that's done. And for our last story in this audio version of Sake Industry News, I want to talk about a new, somewhat new, method of milling the rice uh, that has been developed by the rice milling machine producer Satake. Readers and listeners are certainly aware that the objectives of milling the rice before brewing sake are to remove fat and protein from the out layers of the rice grains and leave pretty much mostly starch behind. This leads to a cleaner fermentation, a more elegant and a more refined sake. It's certainly not the only way to make sake, but with ginjo being as popular as it is today, rice milling is a huge topic. Looking back in history a bit, long ago rice was milled using grinding stones that were driven by water wheels. Back in the late 1800s, a company in Hiroshima, Satake, invented the first automatic rice milling machine. The company then grew steadily over the decades to become the largest and most solid producer of rice milling machines in Japan. They pretty much own the industry. Most of those machines are, of course, used for milling for eating rice, for table rice, but they do make rice milling machines for sake rice as well. In fact, it was Satake that further developed rice milling machines to make a specialist rice milling machines for sake rice only. However, competition sprouted, and there have been over the years other companies that make machines used for milling sake rice as well. Most of them fell by the wayside, and while Satake is certainly still the largest rice milling machine company in Japan, another company called Shin Nakano also makes wonderful machines for milling sake rice. While Shin Nakano is a much smaller company than Satake, They've actually carved out a wonderful niche for themselves and very commonly are the machine of choice for smaller sake breweries. Not exclusively, but in truth I seem to see more Shin Nakano machines being used at craft sake breweries around the country than I do Satake. But in truth I don't really have any hard numbers to back that up. It just might be what I observe. So setting the history of the rice milling machine industry aside for just a moment, uh, when rice is milled, for anything, but in particular for sake, you take something that's originally shaped like a rugby ball, a grain of rice, and the way it gets milled is it ends up quite round, like a baseball. So you've got a, a oblong piece of rice, and there's actually the shimpaku, the starch center within that, that's also oblong. It kind of shares the same shape as the outer grain. However, when you mill it, just the way it goes through the milling machine, you end up milling it evenly all around so that it comes out round. Typically, sake rice will have more fat around the midsection and less fat at the two ends. So if you mill it from its oblong rugby ball shape to a completely round shape, you end up taking as much fat from the tips where there is little fat and less from the midsection area where there's actually a lot more fat to be milled off. No one really thought that much could be done about this, but then about 25 or 30 years ago, a government sake taster, that's a great job if you can get it, uh, came up with the idea of tweaking and jury-rigging milling machines so that when the rice came down and hit the grinding stone, it would actually hit it, maintaining its orientation in the air. What this would allow to happen is it would allow more fat to be milled off the sides and less off the tips, therefore uh, resulting in something with less milling, you can remove a higher ratio of fat. And it works. However, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, brewers have to do it more slowly, they have to be more careful, it calls for a bit of skill, and as such, very few brewers actually do this kind of milling. This milling is called Hempei Semai, or flat milling. There's a brewery in Fukushima called Daishichi that has a wonderful English language site, and they explain their version of Hempei Semai, or flat milling, which they call Cho Hempei Semai, or super flat milling. More importantly, you can see diagrams and read in English a lot about the process at Daishichi's website. So as good as Hempei Semai or flat milling is, it's kind of a hassle, so very few brewers actually do it. Enter Satake, or re-enter Satake. 
While I wouldn't say that Satake has been sitting on their laurels, I would say that we haven't really seen too much from them in terms of development of new fang-dangled milling machines. But they recently developed one that will do regular milling, but it will also do flat milling or hempe semai. Remember, the difference is that with less milling, you remove more fat when you do it the hempe way. And this new machine calls for no jury rigging, no tweaking, just a couple flicks of the switch, and you'll end up with flat milled or hempe semai rice. And you can mill to the same percentage and end up removing more fat and protein from the rice in doing so. However, not content to stop there, Satake also developed their own version of hempe semai. They refer to it as Genke Semai, and the point is that it maintains a bit more of the original shape of the rice after milling. In other words, super flat milling kind of ends up with the rice somewhat flat. Uh, regular milling ends up with the rice being round. But Genke Semai ends up with the rice having the same shape and same dimensions as the rice did before they started to mill. In truth, practically speaking, Rice that's been milled using the new Genke Semai method is somewhere between the original milling method, which makes rice very round, and the Hempe Semai method, which makes it somewhat flat. It's kind of a crossover between the two of them. Please see the email version of Sake Industry News for a diagram that shows you the three rice milling methods. So in order to market this, Satake reached out to a handful of breweries in the Hiroshima area and took the same rice and milled some of it using the Hempe Semai method and some of it using their new Genke Semai method. And they asked the brewers to brew those sakes using those various rice milling methods and report back to them with the results. One such brewery was Imada Shuzo, where the president and toji, Miho Imada, uh, did just that. She brewed a Junmai Ginjo using rice milled in the new Genke method, as well as rice milled in the Hempe Semai method. And she compared them when she was done. I was fortunate enough to receive a bottle of each and able to compare them. In both Miho Imada's words and in my own mind, they were very, very similar. The differences were somewhat subtle. Not surprisingly, the Genke method, which probably has a little bit more fat left over in the rice and a little bit more protein left over in the rice, ended up to be just somewhat fuller, just a little bit fuller. The hempe method seemed to be somewhat lighter in comparison. Furthermore, to me, the hempe method seemed to be a bit more aromatic, but in truth, the sake was very young and it was also namazake. So, and I only had one bottle of each, so it's kind of hard to make an assessment based on that. The toji at Imada Shuzo, Miho Imada herself, actually avoided saying that one was unequivocally better than the other. She said it kind of depends on what kind of sake you want to make. While she may have been being diplomatic, certainly that will probably prove to be true. I have not had a chance to taste the sake brewed in this way by other breweries. To me, what's most significant about all this is not whether this new milling method is better than any other or whether it isn't, but rather that developments are taking place on even the rice milling front. Uh, and on top of that, the industry giant Satake is stepping back in, becoming much more visible in the sake brewing world. That can only be good for sake brewing in the long run. If you enjoyed today's story, be sure to subscribe to Sake Industry News. And twice a month, you'll receive fresh news from the sake industry in Japan, and one technical, historical, or cultural anecdote as well. Go to the URL shown here to subscribe. Only $100 a year for two issues a month, or $10 a month if you prefer to go that route. And both options give you access to all back issues. Still not sure? You've got nothing to lose because your first two issues are free and you can cancel after them with no charge whatsoever. Also, you can use the link shown here and in the notes below for a 20% discount for your entire first year. Sake Industry News. No more. Appreciate more. Mm -hmm.